Hey everyone, Nick Dearbird is here teaching you financial modeling. Today, we're going to be looking at implementing scenario analysis in Excel. This is part of our lecture series on probabilistic modeling. So we gave an introduction to scenario modeling last time. Now we're going to come in and look at how to specifically implement that in Excel. So when doing internal scenario analysis, um, you're setting up a table of the cases and the probabilities, and then you're going to calculate the expected value across the cases for each one of the inputs. And then that expected value is going to become the new input into the model uh, rather than what was there. Whereas external scenario analysis, we've got the existing model. We're going to leave that untouched. Um, and then we'll extend it by using a data table. Um, so the data table, you would um, look at the different possibilities of each of the inputs and um, get the outcomes for all of those. And then you create a separate table which has the cases and the probabilities and references the information from the data table to fill out the outcomes. Um, now, the, a big drawback there with the way that uh, you have to implement this in Excel with the data table is that you can only change two inputs at once with a data table. Um, and so if you want to look at more than two inputs, then you have to get to some pretty hacky kind of approaches um you know some kind of vlookup kind of approach where you have a case number and then a case number corresponds to a bunch of different values of inputs something like that um but uh not very straightforward to do that we'll see later that we do not have this same restriction in python we can do it with as many uh, different inputs as we want in python without any issues <laughs> And we'll also see later in the course, as we get into combining Excel and Python, that you can take your existing Excel model and you can use Python to run the scenario analysis on it with any number of inputs. Um, so that will be a pretty good option for running this in Excel with more than two inputs. So now let's look at the existing dynamic salary retirement model and how we can add uh, scenario analysis to that. So we've got our existing dynamic salary retirement model um, and you can find the completed example here on the course site as well uh, with scenario analysis already implemented and all the formatting just right and everything. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add some additional inputs here. Um, so we're going to have scenario analysis inputs. Uh, and those are going to be the economic condition probabilities. Here we're going to look at um, a bad, neutral, and good economy. Um, Bad, neutral, good economy. Um, well, we don't need to define all three probabilities because we have to sum up to 100%. So I'm going to just define the bad and good probabilities. Um, and then, you know, you would want to update the formatting so that all of this is included in a table. The formatting of these matches the formatting of this. You can find all that in the completed example on the course site. But in interest of time, I'm just going to leave it like this. Um, so then the next thing we want to do is we want to start creating our table, which has the uh, different cases and the probabilities and the different values of the inputs we want to look at in those cases. So this would be a scenario analysis table. Um, and we're going to be looking at the economic condition um, as bad, normal, good. And we can get the expected as well. Um, and then we're going to have the probability next. And we can reference the bad economy probability, the good economy probability, 
and then normal can be uh, one minus each of those two probabilities. Whoops. Minus each of those probabilities. Um, that way we can change the probabilities and everything updates appropriately. Then we want to look at two different inputs here. Let's say uh, the savings rate. Um, and promotions every n years. Uh, and ultimately we want to get the years to retirement as a result. Um, so now the next part is where we come up with the values of the inputs that make sense in each of these scenarios. Um, and so this time I'm going to go for more of the financially constrained uh, individual case. And so we're going to say that they won't be able to save as much in recessions because they are not um, earning as much. Um, and so their savings are lower. So let's say 15% savings rate in a bad economy, 25% in normal, and 35% in the good. And then we'll also say that promotions come less often in recessions. So every eight years in the recession, every five years in a normal economy, and every four years in the good economy. Um, so now we have the basic setup to start doing the actual calculations. Um, and the calculations are going to be through a data table. So you may already have a data table. Um, if you've done a sensitivity analysis on the same variables, um, but I'm going to go ahead and create one here. So in our, it's going to be a two way data table with these two different inputs. And so in the top left cell, I've got to have the outcome variable years to retirement. And then around that, I've got to put the values I want to look at. So on the top here, I can do savings rate, 15%, uh, 25%, 35%, just like we have uh, for our different cases here. And then I can do uh, four or five, eight um, years for how often the promotion is coming. Um, then I can highlight all this and do the data table. Um, and for the data table, uh, row input cell, that's the savings rate. So I'm going to grab the savings rate from the inputs and column input cell, that's promotions every n years. So I'm going to grab that input cell for the column input cell. And then you see we've gotten the years to retirement. So then here uh, we just go and reference the case which aligns with the inputs. So here the 15% 8 case. Here it's 5 and 25%, and here it's 35 and 4. Um, so now we've got the different years to retirement for a bad economy, normal economy, and good economy. And now we can calculate the expected value of these. And the expected value is just going to be each of the probabilities times each of the values and summing them up. Um, and so we can do equals the probability and here I'm going to, um, fix that, um, times the, um, savings rate plus probability fix that times savings rate plus probability fix that times savings rate. And that will get us the expected savings rate there. Um, so then uh, we can just drag that over uh, and, and you switch it to general formatting and we'll get the expected values of these as well because we use the fixed and relative references appropriately. So then we can see based off of our um, economic scenarios that we also get a similar expected uh, years to retirement as we did from the baseline model. Um, and we can also be thinking about, well, if we were in a bad economy the whole time, it would be up towards 37. If we were in a good economy the whole time, it would be down towards 23. So it helps you think about these different situations and how they apply in your model.
Um, and you definitely want to add formatting to all this stuff. Please take a look at the completed example on the course site for the kind of formatting that you could do for these tables. Um, and I'm just not doing that here in the interest of time. So that was adding external uh, scenario analysis to an Excel model. And the internal would be very similar, um, only you would not use a data table. Uh, you would just be using these expected values as the inputs into your model. So that covers um, adding, adding scenario analysis to an Excel model. So thanks for listening. And see you next time.